I got a new tool and I'm really excited about this one. I got a domino. For those of you that don't know what a Festool domino is, it's a tool that helps you make really quick work of loose tenon joinery, also known as floating tenons. Now, there is some controversy around this tool because it's quite expensive and it only does one thing. But it does that one thing really quickly and efficiently. That's why I wanted it and that's why I got it. My job is to make these videos. So the quicker and more efficiently I can make my projects, the more videos I can make for you guys. Just like someone who sells tables for a living, the more tables you can make, the more tables you can sell. So this tool is perfect for someone who is trying to turn out a bunch of projects in a short period of time. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to be upset about this because you just build stuff for fun. You're not looking to crank out a bunch of tables in a small period of time. And I totally get this. If it was up to me and time wasn't a factor, I would want to just use hand tools and take my time and slowly build my projects. But that's not the case. Time is a factor for me and my business. So I'm going to take advantage of amazing tools like this. I realize that this tool is not for everybody and I realize that it's a really expensive one trick pony. And I also realize that you guys love to see me come up with alternative solutions to ways of getting around not having tools like this. So I know some of you are going to be upset and say, now we're not gonna be able to see you come up with those alternative solutions. But that's just the thing. I've been making these videos for five years and I have five years worth of content where I didn't have the domino, so I have already come up with a lot of ways to get around not having one. So instead of you guys having to go and watch all my old videos though, I decided to put all my favorite alternative ways uh, for this kind of joinery in one place, uh, this video. So before we get started though, a quick word from this week's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a super cool security system that's really affordable and easy to set up all by yourself. Welcome to Simply Safe. If I'm going to be collecting all these new cool and expensive toys, I need a way to protect them. For now, I set up entry detectors on all my garage doors and windows. Alarm off. Simply Safe on. Home. And I installed motion detectors in the back corners of my shop. Warning, garage, entry sensor open. It took me about a half hour to set up and now I don't have to worry about my new domino going missing. Alarm off. <sighs> my shop is also now being professionally monitored and the monitoring center will call the police if it's alerted to anything. So if you're interested in a security system that won US World and News Reports, best overall security of 2020 for just 50 cents a day with zero contracts, check out simplysafe.com slash three by three custom, where you could get sensors to cover every window, room, and door of your house. They even have water sensors, temperature sensors, and HD cameras that are also all super easy to install. Now, thanks to Simply Safe, my precious new domino and all my other tools are safe and protected. So I'm going to discuss a bunch of alternative methods that have worked for me in the past. This is by no means all of the methods. And obviously there's the traditional joinery like mortise and tenon and dovetails and all that. I'm not gonna go over any of that. I am just going to talk about quick, easy, machine-made joinery. So there are a few cases where you want to use joinery like this. First is when gluing up large panels, you are edge jointing the pieces like this. And usually this is done just for alignment and not for any added strength. Next, you can use this for casework, like joining the edge of one piece of plywood to the face of another piece of plywood, whether it be on the edge of the piece, like for the actual case, or in the middle of the piece for like the dividers. And probably the most typical way that someone would use a domino would be like a regular butt joint of attaching the end grain on one piece to either the edge grain or the face grain on another piece. This is very typical when making table aprons. 
Let's start with the panel glue up first. So the most common alternative to domino joinery is dowel joinery. Light up the boards you want to join and make tick marks going across both of them. Then place the jig over the bit you plan on using and just use some tape to set the depth of cut so that it's slightly more than half the length of the dowel. Then line up the center drilling guide block onto the lines that you previously made and drill out all the holes. So these dowels that I'm going to use have been sitting in my shop for a couple years now, and it's also super humid in my shop right now. So they have expanded because they've absorbed all the moisture that's in the air. So they're really just way too tight and they don't fit in there well at all. So here's a little trick that I learned from using a lot of dowel joinery. So to get all the moisture out, I cook them. I set them on a paper towel in the microwave for 20 second increments. Sometimes it takes three or four times to see that the moisture is pulled away from them. You'll know that the moisture is pulled out because you can feel that the paper towel is wet. See now, the dowel fits right in, but don't worry that it's too loose. It will swell again when you add the glue, and this is a good thing. Another little tip that I have learned is that some people suggest adding a slight chamfer on the hole for two reasons. It creates a space for the glue to go when you're gluing it up. Or two, the wood might swell up when the glue is added since it's water-based. And if it swells, the joint might pop open. And I don't know how true these statements are, but it makes sense to me. And I guess it doesn't hurt to just add a little chamfer around the hole. No big deal. Okay, so that's simple enough. Why invest in a different tool if just a drill and a jig is going to work fine. Well, the first thing there is that if you're doing this with a dowel jig, you need to make sure that those holes are lined up perfectly. Because if one of these was off either to the right or the left, nothing will line up and you're gonna get very frustrated <laughs> during your glue up. So you have to like really take your time and eyeball and make sure that the line and the jig is lined up with your mark and it takes a long time to do. So th there is an awesome feature on the Domino where you can actually change the width of the cut to be slightly wider just for this reason. So you can just rush through the whole process of hogging out all of those mortises without it needing to be perfectly dead center on your mark, which I think is really cool and will definitely save me time in the future. Another thing is the mess. The, like I just cleaned before making this video and now I have dust all over the place again. So there's no uh, dust collection with the drill, but the Domino has amazing dust collection. Another popular alternative when it comes to panel glue ups is biscuit joinery. So I actually don't have a biscuit joiner, but I figured out a way to do this using a slot cutting bit at the router table. See, you don't always need the right tool. Sometimes you just have to figure out another way using the tools you do have. First, I make marks going down the board that are slightly larger than the length of the biscuits. I install a slot cutting bit in the router and set up some start and stop lines on the router table fence and make a few plunge cuts. I made these slightly oversized so that there's some wiggle room in case I don't get these perfectly on the marks. Glue's going to fill the gaps, it's okay. When doing this, the only important thing is to make sure you're referencing the same surface. So like, I wanna make sure the top is always up on both pieces because there's no way I got this bit perfectly centered in the middle of the board. If I flip it, the pieces would not align with each other. Using biscuits is really easy, especially if you actually have a biscuit joiner, but even without it, I could use that in my handheld router also, something I've done in the past. Uh, I guess the only difference here between the biscuits and the dominoes is that biscuits don't really add strength because of how thin they are, and dominoes add strength to the glue up, not that the glue up needs any added strength because the glue is strong enough, but that is something to consider. Similar to biscuits is a spline. I'm going to use the same slot cutting bit, but instead of doing multiple passes, I'll just do one long pass through both of the pieces. And you could do this at the router table like I'm doing here. You could also do it at the table saw, and you can do it with some handheld routers 
as well. Doesn't matter what you use, the concept is the same. Make a groove going along the edge of both pieces. Again, always referencing the same side. Cut a piece of stock that's the same thickness as the router bit or table saw blade you're using and boom, perfect alignment. Moving on to butt joints, like for casework, if you want to put the edge grain of one piece onto the face grain of another piece. A very easy way to do this is to use dowels. So if you only have this center finding dowel jig, you will only be able to use it to drill on the edge of the piece. You won't be able to use it to drill on the face of the piece. You will need to use what's called dowel points or dowel markers and this is going to mark the corresponding holes. But there are some other options. Dowel Max is a higher end dowel jig that has a ton of features in this. You could even uh, do miters on this. John from Perilla Woodworks uses this all the time and his projects come out awesome. So you could check that out. And I also have my own dowel jig that I created that you can on one side use it as a center finding dowel jig. And on the other side, you can adjust this knob for thickness and you can drill on the face of another piece. So just a quick demonstration on how dowel points are used because they're very common and that's how I started with dowel joinery. So first you drill on the edge of the piece, the holes where you want them, and then you put these dowel points inside those holes that you just drilled out and simply place your workpiece onto the piece that you want to mate it with and the point in there will make a mark for where to drill the corresponding hole. Yes, this works and it's fine, but I had a little trouble in the beginning actually getting these to line up really well. So there is definitely a learning curve here. I was able to get by for a really long time with just using this simple dowel jig, but the Dowel Max is a little bit more expensive and it's packed with a ton of other features. I'm not going to go into detail on all these features, honestly, because I haven't figured them all out yet. And also, um, my dowel jig, I have a whole video and plans and everything on how to make this. So I'll just add a link to that. When it comes to doing joinery for like table legs, I sometimes do something a little bit different. I make myself a marking template if I'm going to use dowels. Now when I'm making a project, I take a piece of scrap that's the same width as the piece that I want to join and I make sure to drill these two holes exactly where I want them and in the correct locations for where they're supposed to be. Obviously it's not the same size or anything as this scrap board um, because this isn't from this project, but this is how I would do something like this. So I would make sure to mark this up. There would probably be some sort of straight edge situation going on here, which I'm not going to do. And you just tap the nails in and pull it out. And it leaves marks on the end of the board. Then you just repeat the same process on your mating piece and it leaves holes in that piece as well. And then you just have to drill it out. In order to keep the hole straight, I like to use this uh, drill block that has a bunch of different size holes in it. I set up the correct depth and just drill the holes. It's important to use a brad point bit here so that the tip of the bit is going to fall into the hole made by the nail in the little jig. Now, obviously these holes were arbitrary and had nothing to do with uh, the location of where I actually wanted this for a project. I would correctly measure and get that done right, but you get the point. And again, while this does end up working in the end, it only works well if this is made well. So it has to be perfectly sized. The holes have to be in a perfect location. And that's something that you don't have to worry about with the domino. This also leaves a mess from drilling that the domino doesn't. So now moving on to something just a little bit more advanced than the dowels is loose tenon joinery. And that's exactly what the domino does, but you can make your own jig and you can make those, those uh, mortises uh, with a router and a jig instead of the domino. I have a whole separate video on how I made this, but basically there's just a fence and a top 
and the top is where your router is going to run along and the fence is going to be the reference for where you put your material. This fence is completely adjustable back and forth so you could change it for any size material you need. You can also do it on an angle if you want. The top of the jig has the start and stopping fences that you can adjust back and forth for where your router is going to start and stop. Then using these dovetail clamps, you can easily clamp the workpiece onto the jig. The opening in the slot here is the same size as a guide bushing that I built this around. So you can swap out whatever size bit you want to make whatever size mortise you need. Another cool feature is that you can add fences onto the fence of the jig so that you can accurately put mortises on multiple pieces in the same location. You can also use this on wider and longer pieces by getting creative with the clamping. So I've used this a ton in my recent projects and I think that it's really awesome and an excellent alternative, but there is an added time of doing the whole setup and I'll put a link to the video on how I made this and how to actually use it. It's like a really detailed video and there's that added time of the setup and there's also the added time of clamping between each pass. And also the router passes are slower than a push of a domino. So another thing that this thing is not really so great for is if you want to put mortises on the middle of a wide piece of material. So it's great near the ends of the material because of the fence, but what if I want to put mortises in the middle here? Like let's say this is a big cabinet and I want to put a divider in the middle. Yes, I can take the fence off. And I could basically use this as a template going along making mortises. Typically a cabinet would be bigger than this piece, so it would have to go, you'd have to do multiple uh, mortises. What I would use is this exact width dado jig. I also have a whole video on this jig. Basically you set the opening to whatever size you want to cut. So typically I would actually just put a divider into a dado and I wouldn't use loose tenon joinery there. So I would just set the width of the opening in the middle to be the exact thickness of the piece of plywood I want to put in. Notice there's a stopper piece here that's at a perfect 90 degrees. So I know this cut is going to be square if it rests on this stop. Then you just clamp it down, make sure the right fit is in your router and cut the dado. Now for casework, I would typically just put a divider in a dado like this, but you could also use this exact width dado jig to make mortises. And you can make multiple mortises by setting up these fences in different locations inside the opening. Now, obviously this depends on which router you're going to use for this jig. If it has a larger base plate, you're only going to have a certain amount of room that you can set up your fences. And this can make three mortises. But if I had a smaller router that I was using with this jig, I would be able to make more, less spaced apart. Now, obviously you don't need jigs like this. You can just set up temporary fences to make mortises but I find that it just is easier with workflow if you already have a jig that's capable of doing the tasks that you want to do and all you have to do is make the necessary adjustments so that it fits the size that you need for your project. Instead of having to, in the middle of the project, have to come up with some way uh, how to get it done. So that's why I love jigs. Now, just for comparison, let's see how much quicker the domino would be at making some mortises in the middle of this workpiece. All you have to do is clamp on a straight edge, butt the fence up to it, and then plunge. I'm sure you guys have seen some other cool, interesting ways to get around not having a domino, so I'd love to see what you guys have to say in the comment section down below but don't say pocket holes. <laughs> there is definitely a time and place for pocket holes. Plywood, casework, yes. Apron to table leg, don't do it. Um, or do it and you'll find out that your table is wobbling in six months. So anyway, I think the takeaway from this video is just be creative. Whenever you see 
that your favorite YouTuber or the YouTubers that you don't like using a tool that you don't have, don't get discouraged. Don't think, I don't have that tool, so I can't make that. I just showed you a bunch of alternative ways to do joinery that is similar to what a domino can do. All those things take a little bit longer and they're a little bit messier, but in the end, you will get the same result. And just come up with your own creative ways. This whole woodworking thing is about being creative. We take ugly, rough pieces of lumber and we turn them into things that they're not supposed to be. So the whole creative process of this is really what it's all about. So just don't let the lack of tools get in the way of you not building something. Just get out there, find something that works, or better yet, find something that doesn't work and then you'll learn what will work in the end. So I hope that you guys got something from this video. Um, it was a lot of fun trying to come up with all these methods. Um, huge thank you to Woodcraft and Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. I cannot wait to use this. Just promise me, don't yell at me and get mad at me in my future videos when I start to use this more. Um, it's really going to help streamline, streamline my process and I can't wait to share everything with you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ooh, ooh. I almost broke my new toy. There's different tools for different people. Everybody's different and we can all get along. <laughs> oh, okay.